What is going on everyone? My name is Andy. Welcome back to another FPL video. In this one, it's my team selection for game week 37, which is of course the last double game week of the season. So I'm going to run you through how the team is looking, thoughts on where to use my transfers and the knock-on effects that will have with game week 38 as well. Captaincy, bench boost, all that good stuff. And I'll also show you how I did in game week 36. So if you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, hit that subscribe button. Let's get into it. All right, let's start with game week 36, which was a pretty good week for me post game week 35 wildcard. I scored 108 points, and that was enough to put me back inside the top 50k. So my exact rank is 45,971st. Before game week 34, obviously a lot of damage was done by free hitters, those that own Mateta, etc. I was about 38k. So I've almost clawed back that damage in the following two weeks. And now we see what happens in the final two weeks. No predictions about where I might finish because it all ends up going wrong as soon as I do that. But I'm pretty happy to be back inside the top 50k and hoping to push on uh, in the next couple of weeks. In terms of the 11 that I had, nine of them returned. Only two blanks. One was Dan Byrne, who I played ahead of Dallow, who got zero, and Pedro Porro that got zero. So those two points, every little helps. Frustrating not to get the clean sheet, to be honest, because Burnley didn't have a huge amount of chances. And it was a set piece when Newcastle already had the game comfortably won. A set piece that shouldn't have happened as well. Uh, but look, it is what it is. He still scored more than the defenders on my bench. And then Edison and Gull scored a two-pointer while Petrovic got six points. A lot of people will probably look at that and say it was just a mistake to play Edison because he always concedes. And he was at fault for the goal. But overall, Man City only conceded something like 0.35 xG. And I know we've been down this route before. Man City hardly concede any chances. Then they still end up conceding. But I don't think it was a terrible mistake. It was only a four-point swing. And Jared Bowen himself, I think, hit the woodwork three times in that game against Chelsea. So on another day, it might have been slightly different. Whatever, right? In a, in a week that went so well, I don't want to dwell on, you know, a slight mistake in the goalkeeper choice. Um, Gabriel and Saliba, double Arsenal defence, as you might imagine, came in again were they a little bit lucky against Bournemouth to not concede maybe but they've been like this all season right they don't give away a huge amount of chances Gabriel seven points Saliba six every single one of my midfielders came in apart from Bruno Fernandes who wasn't in the squad I know a lot of people played Fernandes and then got points off the bench I actually benched him because he was a doubt that's the only reason because I couldn't separate any of my eight attackers so I put Fernandes on the bench I played Palmer eight Son seven Gordon six which would have been more had Isaac converted the penalty because Gordon won that. And then Foden got the assist for one of Haaland's four goals. And then I had Haaland captain, right? And look, there's plenty of times this season where people have not captained Haaland and sometimes not even owned him and it's gone perfectly well. This just wasn't one of those weeks and stuff like that can happen in FPL. Uh, and obviously, he goes and gets four goals. I've got him captain, 42 points. Absolutely ridiculous. Brutal if you missed it, especially if you don't even own him. Um, but I guess that's what can happen. We've all been on the the wrong end of hauls like that over a season. Uh, maybe it just hurts a little bit more because it's so close to the end. But happy to have him. Isaac, seven points. Would have been more, obviously, if he'd scored the penalty. He's probably not going to be on penalties now. But there is a chance that Wilson could be out. We'll have to wait and see. There's just rumours going around that Wilson might not be available for Newcastle this weekend. And if that happens, I'm pretty sure Isaac will take the next penalty. It's not going to go to Anthony Gordon. And then my favourite points of the week, even more so than Haaland's four goals, Nicholas Jackson getting three attacking returns and finishing on 16 points. And the reason I prefer them, or like the points more, is because his ownership was still relatively low, so those points really meant something. And to be fair, Haaland captaincy was actually pretty nice as well, because he was a little bit lower owned than he normally would be, but Jackson was much lower owned, and they really pushed up the green arrow this week. They were one of the big factors... Uh, the help with that obviously now a lot of people are bringing him in because he's got a few goals and assists over the last couple of games but having him prior to that for the double in 35 and then the 16 pointer in 36 before everyone brings him in is great so really enjoyed those points finally got some points from nicholas jackson it's taken a few attempts but that was decent 108 points 190,000 game week rank i don't know if game week 37 is going to be quite as good as that but hopefully it will be let's take a look so going into game week 37, I've got two free transfers and 1.3 million in the bank. My bench boost is also active as well, so I'm definitely going to use it this week. That's been the plan for a little while now. My bench in 38 is not terrible, but it's not better than it is this week. So I'm going to use it this week. Uh, my general plan or hope is to roll the transfer into game week 38. So just use one this week 
save the other one, have two for the final week. And one reason for that is to be flexible in terms of any team news we might get. There might be some teams that rotate because they've got nothing to play for and stuff like that. But also, it leaves me a little bit more open to taking a couple of punts if I want to push for overall rank. It might be that I get to game week 38, I'm pretty happy with my rank, and I just go for the obvious picks like Arsenal midfielders, but I at least want to leave my options open if I can. That being said, don't feel like you have to have two transfers next week because I actually think for most of the players that are filling up our squads at the moment they're probably going to be uh, they're probably going to play and there probably isn't going to be a huge amount of rotation that we're expecting and obviously there's a lot of points on offer this week in the double game week so if you have to use two transfers or even take hits it's well worth it I'm just hoping to be in a lucky position where I don't need to do that now on to the defense and the bench so at the moment I've got Edison on my bench boost with Fulham away and Spurs away and I'm playing Petrovic with Forrest away and Brighton away I think that's fair it's quite close I mean Man City defense is probably better but Petrovic is less frustrating maybe more likely for save points Chelsea in a good place right now as well Brighton not scoring a huge amount of goals so I'm going to play Petrovic and bench Edison I like having a realistic bench so I know what my bench boost scores uh, I've got Nicholas Jackson on the bench as well although you could make an argument he should be in the 11 and then Gabriel and Saliba, Man United away. They've got a pretty good chance, I would say, especially if Man United don't get players back, of getting a clean sheet. But I'm never going to play them over double game week players. So that's my bench boost. Edison, Jackson, Gabriel, Saliba, Petrovic in goal. And then my back three is Dan Byrne, Dallo, and Pedro Porro. Now, with Byrne and Porro in particular, I'm not really worried about them the Spurs defense isn't particularly great but I quite like the Burnley at home fixture in particular Porro is also attacking and Dan Burns the only nailed Newcastle defender I would say that you can be absolutely sure is going to start both games like Trippier might be back in the squad so that means Liveramento wouldn't play right back if Trippier plays one of the games in 37 it could mean that Liveramento plays left back instead but that's not a guarantee because Lewis Hall's playing well at the moment and I'm not going to worry about bringing Kraft in or anyone like that. So Burn is good too. With Dallow, look, I said this on the video yesterday. No way you buy him right now, but I cannot bring myself to sell him. But there's no other double game week defender that I don't own, which I think is massively better. I can't go to Vardio because I've already got three City. I can't go to Kukurea. I've already got three Chelsea. Can't go for another Newcastle defender. I've already got three Newcastle. Like I could swap him to Romero. But I'd rather swap Saliba to Romero instead with the one free transfer to get my third Spurs player rather than sell a double game weaker. And for anyone that's saying it in the comments already that Arsenal have got a better chance of a clean sheet this week than Man United doing either of those fixtures, I would agree with you, but I still cannot bring myself to sell a double game week player. So Dallow will almost certainly be staying. Like lots of people are looking at Everton defenders, and I get it, right? Sheffield United at home, great chance of a clean sheet. And maybe if you were buying new, you'd go for Tarkovsky or Branthwaite instead of Dallow. I absolutely get that. But it's a big difference when you actually have to sell the play you've already got in your team that's going to play 90 minutes in both games. And you just pray that Man United don't get absolutely smashed and it goes into negative points. And maybe Dallow from somewhere can just get you an attack and return. So I've got to take the, the gamble on that, I think. Um, because Bruno Fernandes, who we'll talk about in a minute, is yellow flag, that's probably where my transfer is going to go. But if he was fully fit and available for 37, and we know when he is, right, he always plays 80 to 90 minutes every single game, there is maybe a case to keep hold of him, in which case I'm actually struggling a little bit for a, for a transfer. I'm in a very lucky position this week, and I may well just do Saliba to Romero just to get another double game weaker in, even if it is a Spurs defender. Like, I'd rather have Romero than Saliba this week. And if I'm struggling for a transfer, I think that's okay. Even if, in game week 38, I just reverse it. Maybe even go to Ben White. So that could be something I do if I don't have to deal with Bruno Fernandes. Saliba to Romero. And then in game week 38, just do Romero probably to Ben White, just to get a different Arsenal defender in. But as it stands right now, no transfers planned in defense unless we get some injury news in the press conference the only one that's even possible right now is Saliba to Romero just because I don't have three Spurs players but I suspect my defense will just stay as it is so just one quick thing to add on the end here I do have the option to switch Edison to Vardio so instead of doing Saliba to Romero I could do Edison to Vicario 
and then Saliba to Vardy, right? So that would give me what most people would view as the best Man City defensive option right now. And I'd probably agree with that. I just don't think it's worth two free transfers. I mean, I don't think two transfers in game week 38 is absolutely essential. But if you can get to that point, I think it's worth doing. And ultimately, if I've got Edison and Romero, I'm covering the Man City and Spurs clean sheet with two of my players. If I've got Vicario and Vardio, I'm covering the same clean sheets. I'm just hoping that those two free transfers will get me more saves from Vicario and maybe more attacking returns from Vardio. But that is not guaranteed. So I just don't think it's worth the extra transfer. And also a side note, a lot of people are going to say, why are you doubling up on the Spurs defense? It's not really part of the thinking. It's more so... Who is the better option, Saliba or Romero? I'm not really worried that I also own Poro as well because I could always reverse that in game week 38. And I'd be less worried about it if I went the Vardio route because obviously I'd play him against West Ham and having Vicaro against Sheffield United away final game week of the season is fine as well. So that is a move that a lot of people are going to look at, Edison to Vardio. I, I just think I'm going to favour the extra transfer instead and also back back against the high ownership. Vardio is very highly owned right now. Maybe that's a risk that I'm willing to take on. Because if he doesn't get any attack and returns, I'd be hopeful that Edison will obviously get the same amount of clean sheet. Well, he would, right? I, I don't know what I'm saying. Hopefully, they would. As long as they're both playing, they're going to get the same clean sheets if they bo both make it past 60 minutes. So that's the bet. The extra free transfer is worth more later on. And also that Vardio won't keep up these level of returns, which he may well do because of the position he's playing. But my bet would be that he won't. And if that works, then it's going against a high ownership. And maybe that could be worthwhile in terms of pushing up the ranks a little bit more. So in midfield, I've arguably got the best option from five of the six teams that are doubling this week. So Cole Palmer, I don't think there's any contest. He's easily the best Chelsea midfielder. I absolutely don't mind Madueke as a punt, but he's not better than Palmer. I don't think anyone would argue that. Son is still, for me, the best attacker at Spurs on penalties, the only one you can really guarantee the minutes from. Richarlison, Johnson could do really well, but I don't think they're better than Son. Gordon, again, in terms of attacking potential and minutes, is easily the best at Newcastle. You could maybe say that De Bruyne is better than Foden, fair enough, but I think Foden can match him at a better price, so I'm more than happy with that pick as well. So for those four players... Parmesan, Gordon Foden. There's not really anything to do unless we get to tomorrow and there's a press conference which says that one of them is a doubt or one of them is out. I'm, I'm going to play all four and there's no point in using a transfer on them. Bruno Fernandes is potentially a problem. We don't have any news about him, which I find a little bit surprising. Like one of the most important players for Man United. And there's just been no discussions, no journalists coming out with information, which I think for Man United is a little bit of a surprise. So all we know is he wasn't in the squad against Crystal Palace. Apparently, it's not the issue he's had with his hand or his wrist. He's got like a bit of an ongoing ankle issue, and maybe that's what's kept him out. Again, nothing official. Ten Hag hasn't mentioned what it is. If he's, if Ten Hag says he's fine and he's back and he's going to play, I could keep him, and I'd probably be slightly tempted to do that. But if he's in any way a doubt, I'm going to sell him. I'm not going to take the risk. If Ten Hag says he's a doubt then yes, we can go down the lines of it's Arsenal. He hardly ever misses out. I get it. And he won a play in that game, but he has literally just missed out now. So as much as he's been an absolute regular and for Man United and never missed a game through injury, he has now missed a game. And that means he must have been, he must have a, a genuine issue, right? So if he's a doubt, I'm going to use a transfer to sell him, even if it's um, still likely that he could play in both games because it's probably just not worth the risk. Now, in terms of options to where I could go to, again, I'm quite limited. I can't go to a Chelsea, Newcastle, or Man City player because I'm already tripled up. I could go to Pascal Gross. I don't mind him for the double because he should play in both games. It was a little bit unlucky, I would say, to not get a return in the game against Villa as well. I think the fact that he always plays and always gets decent minutes, he, you know, he's going to get those chances. But I think I'm more likely to just use my third Spurs slot and just get Richarlison instead. Now, he is a little bit of a risk himself. I don't think it's a guarantee that he starts both games, but I'm pretty hopeful, unless Ange Postacoglu says something tomorrow, that he's going to start against Burnley, and that is obviously the better fixture out of the two that Spurs have in 37. And if you can also get him for Sheffield United in 38, that looks like a nice punt, because his ownership is low, 
and he's not really getting in a huge amount of transfers. That might change by tomorrow and Saturday when you know people start making their moves and stuff like that. But Richardson's had forty thousand transfers in. That is less than that's less than Bruno Gomes at Newcastle and less than Gallagher and Madueke at Chelsea. And look, Madueke and Chelsea are doing really well right now, so fair enough. But it, it means that Richardson is going to be quite a big differential. The other thing is it frees up a lot of money. So right now I've got 1.3 million in the bank. If I do Fernandez to Richarlison, that leaves me at 2.9. And that makes it slightly easier to go for a punt on Salah in the last game week of the season, which I'll discuss a little bit later on. So I think right now I'm kind of favoring Richarlison. And and at this point, like, I obviously want Fernandez back because Man United are a mess as it is. They need him. But from an FPL only point of view, being able to sell into Richarlison, I think is quite nice. You get a major differential for a good double game week who also has a great fixture in game week 38. Let's not forget how many goals Sheffield United conceded this season. And he also frees up a lot of money as well. So I'm kind of, I'm almost to the point of talking myself into doing that move, even if Fernandez is fit. I don't think I will though, but it is a possibility. I think if Fernandez is fit, I'd rather just make the Saliba to Romero move instead. But then then I'm definitely blocking off Richarlison or even like a Madison punt in game week 38. It's a tricky one. Let's see what let's see what is said with Fernandez. Um, but I'm not going to take any risks, right? Again, I'm I've said it a few times now. I'm in a lucky position where he's the only player in my team that's currently flagged. There is no point taking a doubt into 37 when I've got two free transfers to use. So Fernandez to Richardson right now is looking like my most likely move. And then up front, I've got Erling Haaland and Alexander Rizat with Nicholas Jackson first on the bench, which I already mentioned, but obviously I'm bench boosting this week, so I'll get his points anyway. We can wait and see what Eddie Howe says in tomorrow's press conferences, but it doesn't really matter whether Wilson is fit or not for me. I'm not going to sell Isaac. It's just not worth the transfer. Yes, if Wilson was fully fit and likely to start one or maybe both of the games in 37, you could go for him as a punt if you really want to push it. But Isaac's almost certainly going to start both of those matches. And if Wilson is out, he's going to be on penalties as well. So there's no need to get rid of him. And as you might imagine, I'm not selling Erling Haaland either. And he is currently my captain. I just don't see that changing. Like I'm at a bit of a, like a weird rank, like 45k. Does it really matter if I fall to like 70, 80k? Probably not. So I could push to try and go for like a top 10k finish. But I don't think I'm willing to to bet against Haaland. We saw last week exactly what he can do. And this week it could be twice as bad with two fixtures. Obviously you're you're almost like taking, it feels like you're almost taking like twice the risk because if Haaland blanks in both games, then absolutely you're going to smash it if you go for someone else. But what is the chances of that happening against Fulham and Spurs? I'd rather go with him as the obvious choice this week. And for me, clearly the best option out of all the players I've got and then see where I'm at in game week 38 and then decide how risky to go. Because let's not forget I'm bench boost. And I know a lot of people have got it left in the top 10k, top 100k. So it's not going to be maybe worth as many points as it might have been in previous seasons. But it's still going to be, and no pun intended, a bit of a boost this week. And so if that gets me to a good position, then I can decide in game week 38 how much to risk my transfers and how much to risk the captaincy. So I'm almost certainly going to go boring and play hard. And so that is how the team is set up right now. Bench boost active. Fernandez to Richarlison, the most likely move. I'll roll the other one into next week. If Fernandez is fine, I might just do Saliba to Romero. I think I'm more likely to do that than I am to switch Edison to Vardio. Just to quickly show you on Fantasy Football Hub, as always, if you want to use the My Team tool and all the other stuff, they've got links in the description. If I do Fernandez to Richarlison this week, which I've already done, this is what the squad looks like in game week 38, right? So I'd play both Arsenal defenders, Gabriel and Saliba against Everton at home and Pedro Porro against Sheffield United away. I'd have I'd have either Edison against West Ham at home or Petrovic against Bournemouth at home. I'm not going to go into details right now. Either way, no goalkeeper swap uh, needed. I'd obviously play Richarlison and Son because they've got Sheffield United away, right? So you're always going to play players with that kind of fixture. Palmer's got Bournemouth at home, Foden's West Ham at home, and then Haaland's West Ham at home as well. He's at Brentford away and Nicholas Jackson, Bournemouth at home. I'd probably bench Anthony Gordon as it stands. Now with two free transfers and 2.9 million, one of the moves that looks pretty obvious is to go for an Arsenal midfielder, right? So I could do Gordon to Saka and then choose one of these other four players to bench. 
but I'm slightly tempted to leave a route, and this is why I like Richarlison, it leaves the route open for Salah. Now, I would have to sell Son or Foden, but at that point, you're, if you're bringing Salah in anyway and you're taking out one of those players, you're open to taking a bit of a risk. Like yesterday, I put this up on Twitter and said it depends how much of a risk I'm willing to take. And obviously, a few comments came back saying, why would you get rid of these good players? Well, that's the whole point, to take a bit of risk in the final week. Players like Foden and Nizat, their ownership is super high. So I could do something like Foden out for Salah and then Isaac out for anyone 6 million or below. I'd probably go for João Pedro because he's got Man United last game, uh, game of the season. And that would be my final team. My only decision would be whether or not to play João Pedro against United or Gordon against Brentford away. And to be honest with you, as much as Brentford away is a good fixture, I'd probably play João Pedro because Man United is an even better fixture and they're at home and João Pedro is on penalties. And he's much lower owned than Gordon. So again, you're you're building in a bit of risk to try and go up the rank. So it's potential for me if I go the Richarlison route in game week 37 that I could have an attack of Richarlison, Son, Sheffield United away 38. Uh, sorry, yeah, in 38. So Richarlison, Son, Sheffield United away. Palmer, Bournemouth at home along with Jackson, Bournemouth at home. Salah, Wolves at home. Last game at Anfield for Klopp. He's almost certainly going to start Salah. It's just about how many minutes he gets. And then João Pedro Man United at home and Haaland West Ham at home. And then I can choose, I can either leave it at that. That might be enough risk. Or maybe I even captain Salah ahead of ahead of Haaland, right? It depends how much I want to push it. And you're right. You know, I can see you writing those comments already. I will probably go the boring route instead and just go for an Arsenal midfielder and captain Haaland. But at least this leaves my my options open so that's the kind of rough plan of why i like the richarlison move but i'm going to leave it there because ultimately we might find out tomorrow that bruno fernandez is fine i might get to game week 38 and think what the hell am i doing thinking about selling players like Isaac and foden that just spells trouble so that's the team selection for game week 37 if you've enjoyed it make sure to give it a like hit that subscribe button rate five stars if you listen on podcast i'll be back for final thoughts tomorrow going through all the press conferences then the deadline stream on saturday which will hopefully start around 9 a.m uk time so i'll catch you for all of that thanks for watching and i'll see you tomorrow